Hey guys, what's up? Wyatt here. Just wanted to make a short video on how to sign your child up for a USDA tournament. This is something we've been talking about for a long time, Jamie and I, and it's about time we get this information out there to you because I know a lot of our kids are ready to play in their first tournament. Um, it's got a bunch of information for you. Hopefully this video doesn't go too long. So before you sign up for your first tournament, it's important that we go over just a few basic things, okay, that you need to be able to do, your kids need to be able to do before they play their first tournament. So they need to be comfortable with the flow of the game. They need to be able to keep score. They need to know the score at all times. They need to know whose job it is to say the score. And they need to know what happens if the score is forgotten. So the bottom line is they need to be very, very comfortable with the scoring system in tennis, all parts of it. You know, deuce, no add, regular scoring, tiebreakers, because they are going to play a lot of tiebreakers in tournaments. That's one of the things that the tournament directors do to keep the matches from going too long. Uh, they need to be able to make line calls. That's a little bit of an easier one. They need to know which side to stand on. Uh, they should know that based on the score. They need to know when to switch sides. Um, and again, if they know how to keep track of the score, then that's that's going to be easy. They need to be able to get their serve in. Um, uh, you know, at least probably sixty percent of the time. Uh, that's gonna if they can get it in sixty percent of the time. And they get two tries to get it in. They're not going to double fault very often. Um, so those are those are the basic things. And the reason they need to know all this stuff is because tennis is a little different than other sports, as we've talked about before. You cannot coach when your kids are in the match. In soccer and basketball, you can sit there and you can scream until you lose your voice uh, from the sidelines. Uh, and you can tell your kids what to do, but unfortunately, once they step out on the tennis court, they're on their own. They can talk to the tournament director, and they can talk to the other player, but that's it. Um, and that's how kids sometimes get taken advantage of. It doesn't happen as much at the beginner levels, but it does happen still, and, and as you get better, it happens more. Um, I know it can be frustrating to watch your kid get taken advantage of or forget the score or serve on the wrong side, but you you have to try your best to remain quiet. Now, that's just some of the things that you need to be that your kids need to be comfortable with regarding, you know, the flow of the game. Uh, there's also a whole nother subset of important kind of unwritten rules here that you need to follow. So tournament play is very serious. You guys are going to spend a lot of money to enter your kids in these tournaments. It's going to cost you anywhere from $40 to $75 to enter one singles tournament. So it's it's not something that is... And sometimes that might only mean one match. Um, so it's not something that you want to sign your kid up for the tournament and then, oh, you know, they didn't... You know, we got here a little late or, or they didn't have enough water. You want to make sure you've done all your preparation. So let's go over a few things. Get a good night's sleep. That's an obvious one. Wake up at least two and a half hours before your match, you know, if you have a morning match, preferably three. The, uh, the three was my rule back in the day, and I'm sure Jamie would agree with something like this. I mean, maybe it was even earlier. For him, it's really hard to roll out of bed in the morning and – you know, even even as a young kid, you know, roll out of bed an hour before your match, grab some breakfast, hopefully, and then show up to the court and be awake and, and ready to play. Uh, you know, if you can, like, for example, if I had a match that was at 830 in the morning, I'd wake up at 530 just because I know I'd be extremely tired when I first got up. But by the time it was 7.30 or 8 o'clock, an hour, a half hour before the match, I had had my good breakfast and I was awake and ready to go. So obviously hydration, good meal. Get to the tournament site 45 minutes before your match. That might seem crazy, but you need to get there early because you might not know where's the, where's the tournament desk, where do I check in, you know, where, 
where are the courts? I mean, maybe it's a big um, complex. As you start to play more tournaments, you'll become more familiar with the sites. And, you know, so you can you could push that a little bit, but there's really no point. You want to get there early and not be stressed out. Um, you want to have snacks in your bag, plenty of water and sports drinks for the match, uh, hat, sunscreen, those are obvious things. Make sure you have an extra racket. This isn't going to happen too much in the beginning, but... You know, you need to have an extra racket just in case you break a string or something happens. Maybe the grip is bugging you. Um, you know, because if you if you break the string in that one racket and you don't have another one, you're not going to be able to finish the match. And it, the other kid might have one, but and there might be someone's a racket somewhere, but you just don't know. So come prepared. Um, even though these kids, you know, you're they're going to be starting off with you know the very novice level tournaments it's good to work on these preparation things now bring your tennis clothes another obvious one you got to have shorts skirts with pockets and layers depending on the weather and the time of year uh bring layers so you're not freezing um you know matches are going to be sometimes early in the morning and then and then it warms up and you want to take some layers off or or maybe you need to put some on if it's evening it just depends but you want to be comfortable so make sure your equipment is in good shape. Uh, you know you don't want to be playing with bad a bad grip and then go oh gosh I lost the match because my grip kept slipping. Um, warm up this is important too. So you know the whole one of the whole points of getting there forty five minutes early is maybe you can find a court to warm up on or a wall to hit against. You know it's not always going to be the case, but you could get lucky if you don't have a court or a wall then you're going to want to carry some balls around with you in your bag red or orange balls are good um just because they're they're squishy they're not going to hurt anything if you're out there uh just kind of volleying back and forth in the parking lot just getting the hand-eye coordination warmed up um you can bring regular balls too that's fine uh sometimes those are harder are going to be a little bit harder to volley with um at uh kind of the the level that these kids are at uh jump rope this is a really really good one you know this is what a lot of athletes do to to get warmed up you keep that jump rope in your bag and you crank it out when you get to the tournament site and you use that to start warming up your fast twitch muscles you get your wrists warmed up uh you know you get all those important um body parts warmed up um and then obviously the last thing is check in with the tournament director or the tournament desk at least 15 minutes before your match and there may be rules they may want you to check in earlier it just depends i'm going to show you where all that information is all this stuff again it might seem like overkill but you know as i said the tournament play is serious you're going to pay a lot of money to enter these tournaments um and so you should take it seriously do the preparation the best you can I uh, encourage your kids to do that, and that's going to help them because you, you don't want them to, you know, if they lose the match, so a lot of these tournaments you're only going to get, you know, it's their single elimination. So if you lose your first match, your weekend is done. You have no more tennis. Um, and hopefully if you lose that first match, it's because you got outplayed, you gave it your best shot. Hopefully it's not because you got dehydrated or you got hungry or your grip was falling apart. Or you didn't have shorts of pockets, so you had to go and run back to the fence and grab the ball every time, or, or whatever it is. Um, so do your best preparation possible. It's really going to help down the road. Okay, so those are the important things. Let's get on to how to actually sign up for the tournament. This is the fun part. Okay, so you're going to want to go to USTA.com and click on Join here. And there's going to be a few options. You're going to do the players 18 and under junior. Plans starting at $20. Click on get started. Now they're going to give you a few options here. So one year, three year, five year, lifetime. I would stick, uh, stay away from the lifetime unless you want to give the USTA a nice little donation. Um, tennis is the sport of a lifetime. Uh, but... And it might seem like a good deal. It's uh, 10 bucks a year for 75 years. But 
stay away from that and stay away from the three year and the five year unless you're 100 percent sure or you're committed it's not that big of a price break just start with the one year and and that's going to do just fine so you're going to want to click on sign up here fill out this form now put in your information here because unless your kid is 13 years or older, you're gonna have to register for them. And I'm gonna use my, uh, we're gonna use an email here. So on the next screen, that's where you're gonna be able to add your kid's information. But first we're gonna try this here and see if this works. I put in my zip code and put in a birth date of March 3rd, 1959. Okay, click that box, create your account, and now it should bring you to the next screen where, yeah, here we go, add a family member. So you're gonna wanna fill this out, put in your kids' information, Put in their birth date and make sure you use their real birth date and don't put in a fake birthday. Uh, you don't want to get busted down the road for that. Uh, and then go ahead and continue on here. And then eventually it's going to ask you for your credit card number. I'm not going to fill any uh, the rest of this out here. But then you're going to pay and then it's going to give you your USTA member number. It should give you an account number. And once you're finished with that, now you can click on Tennis Link tennis link at the top okay it's tennislink.usta.com and it's going to bring you to this screen here where you can have a ton of information of course um oh welcome junior player okay i'm going to log out because i don't want this thing bothering me i don't know why it's doing that so scroll down click on tournaments okay now you'll see this little box here, find a tournament. You'd think it would be as simple as just putting in your zip code. Uh, we'll put in Newport Beach there. And then selecting all junior in the drop down and hitting search. And what you're gonna find here though, is the first tournament that comes up is in Newport Beach. You can see the location here. Uh, it's actually just at Palisades Tennis Club right there on Jamboree. But it's not until September 13th, that's too far away. I wanna play in a tournament now. Um, here's this one that's level six and seven, L six and seven. And that as that looks like it's at Estancia uh, in Costa Mesa, but that is still not until May. So you'd think you could fix that problem by having it sort the, the order the results by date. But then what you're gonna notice here now is it, it sure you know it sure has done that but it's it's now showing the first tournament by date but it's it's in St. George Utah that's too far okay so all these tournaments are too far away hey, San Antonio so you need to go back to tournaments and then you need to click on tournaments advanced search this is the way it's always been um I don't know why they have that tournament thing set up the way it is. And if you just go in there and put in your zip code like we just did and you put in all juniors, it's going to bring up a ton of tournaments mm -hmm. that you know, you're not even going to be uh, you're not even going to be eligible for. So just go to the tournaments advanced search. Now, age group, do junior. Um and then let's see here. Okay, so only show entry level events. Now, if you click on this box, it's only gonna show level seven tournaments. I'll talk more about that in a second, but for now, let's just leave that box unchecked. Start date, you don't have to worry about that just now. What you could do is go in here and select the month um, and the year, and and then it's gonna, when it brings up the results, it's gonna start in that month. You don't need to do that. Okay, but what you do want to do is put in your zip code here. So put in your zip code and then set the mileage to, let's just start with 50. That's going to bring up tournaments that are within 50 miles. Uh, and that might seem like overkill, but you just kind of want to, you're going to, and you could always change it to 20 or 10, but you're not going to 
not going to get as many results. And we just want to see what's out there right now. So shortcut, you're going to want to click on this here, and it, this is going to help you filter the actual results that come up. So for us, let's just look at all upcoming, all upcoming tournaments. National section district, don't mess with that. You could go in here and select uh, the, where's California? You could go and select, yeah, you could do SoCal. You could do Southern California. Uh, well, this would be our section here, but you don't need to do that because you've already done the, the zip code and the distance up here. Divisions, now this, we did click on juniors on the top, but let's just go ahead just to be safe here and where on earth okay junior divisions now category there's so many categories in here i don't even know where to start um but most of the stuff you're going to be looking at is this level i don't even know why they have level 10 9 and 8 i'm not sure what they use those for but most of the tournaments we're going to be looking at are going to be level 7 and 6 so I'm just going to leave that as is. I don't know why the surface is on grass. There's probably only 50 grass courts in this country. Now there's more than that. But you're going to want to do all surfaces, um, even though Southern California is pretty much exclusively hard court. So I think we've got our settings correct. Let's click on search. Okay, so ah, you see... It's still bringing it up by location here. It's ordering the results by location. So first tournament that's coming up is this one that we saw earlier. It's May 9th. That's still, I want to play in a tournament now. So let's order this by date now and we should have fixed our problem. Okay, so this is good. So this tournament is on Saturday, February 15th. Today is February 13th. This is a level seven tournament at the Seal Beach Tennis Center right there off 405. It's right smack dab on the freeway. So this is not too far away. Now, this is kind of nice here. And you highlight this and it actually tells you that it's an entry level tournament. As your child just, uh, just starting to compete, kids gain experience, confidence by playing multiple matches close to home. So this is kind of what you're going to be looking for in the beginning here. Uh, so let's go ahead and, but you'll notice the entry is closed today. So we have to make a decision pretty quickly if we want to register. So let's click on this tournament here and take a look. So you'll see it brings up this whole page, uh, here. And, and just a quick side note too, you'll start to notice this system that they use process by active. For those of you that are in Laguna Hills that have to register for classes through the city, it's the exact same system. So they, they both use the same registration systems, which is why it's so complicated. It's an extremely robust system. So it just takes a little getting used to. Anyway, let's just go shoot through this really quick. Tournament ID right here. This is going to be helpful in case you ever want to just come back and just go straight to this page a lot of times the interesting thing is you know with active stuff their bookmarks don't always work so you might not be able to bookmark this you might just copy this number and then you can punch that in the search box where we originally put in the zip code and then it's going to bring you right to this page dates february 15th and 16th now that's important so that means that if you sign up for this tournament you need to be prepared to play on february 15th and 16th okay so it's it's a commitment and you don't know what time your match is going to be until they publish the draws and they should do that a couple days beforehand it's kind of interesting that this tournament closes tonight entries close tonight and then uh the tournament starts on saturday that doesn't give you a lot of time to plan so that's kind of the first thing that's a little interesting about this a lot of the other tournaments are going to close earlier than that and then they'll have the draws up hopefully by like a wednesday or thursday so you you at least have a, you know a couple days to plan okay i need to be in seal beach at whatever time okay so now this is this is important here so divisions level seven that is novice level seven 
is going to be the most beginning level of tournaments that they have. Boys and girls, singles, 78-foot yellow ball, 12 to 16 NEF. What on earth does that mean? So 78-foot means the full court. That's what, that's what that means. Yellow ball, that means the regular ball. So they're playing on a full court with the regular ball. And then 12 to 16 means 12 and unders, 14 and unders, 16 and unders. And so that's how they're going to break up the actual boys and girls division. So they're going to have boys ages 12 and under, boys ages 14 and under, girls ages 16 and under. They're going to have all that for each age and uh, and gender. And that means, though, that, that if your kid is, is 12, they could play in a 14 and under. They could play in a 12 and under. They could play in a 16 and under. If you're 13, you can play in the 14 and under and 16 and under, but not the 12 and under. So that's how that works. NEF, non-elimination format. That means this tournament you cannot be eliminated. So that that kind of tells you, you know, this is this is just kind of well, it's it's almost kind of a for fun tournament um, because there's really no losing. I'll get to that in a second. They also have this orange level one boys and girls. 10 under single, 60 foot orange ball, 10 NEF. So 10 and under kids, boys and girls, can play this tournament and they'd be playing with orange ball on a 60 foot court, which remember is the smaller court. Uh, The baseline is halfway between the service line and our full court baseline. So it's a smaller court. Uh, If you can imagine, they've chopped, uh, they've chopped nine feet off the length on each end. And that's how they get to the 60-foot court. All right, how'd you like that math? Um, pretty good. Now, let's keep working our way down here. So entries closed. We already talked about that. Entry information, 44, uh, excuse me, 48.88 per player. So that's what it's going to cost you to get into this tournament. And then here, as you keep scrolling down, and by the way, I don't know if you saw this contact info here. You need to get in touch with the tournament director They've got their phone numbers right here, email as well. So in here, uh, this is what the tournament directors, they can actually go in here and put in these notes. And you're going to want to kind of read through this. Now, most of this stuff isn't important, but but some of it is. So you'll see, too, what they, with with these novice events, these level 7 tournaments, what they do is they make it so that if you've already won, like like for example here, players who win two rounds in a satellite, that's going to be like a level six or higher. If if you've won two rounds, you can't play in a novice anymore. Um, so they're gonna they're they're trying to weed out the the kids that are too advanced because they want this to be a good experience for for the true novice players. Uh, if you've won two novice tournaments, then no, you you can't play. Uh, you've got to move on to level six. All right, this is just for beginners. Now, uh, here's the other thing we're talking about. Players need to show up 15 minutes early. And they're calling this a round robin, which means everybody's going to play everybody. And uh, let's see here. Players, so here we've got the format of play here. Players will compete in a round robin format. Depending on the number of entrants, some groups may be scheduled to play on Saturday and others on Sunday. So it seems like you're... Probably just going to be playing on one day. It uh, doesn't seem like it's going to spill over. So you, if you register for this tournament, you're only going to play on Saturday or Sunday. So it's not taking up your whole weekend. Total games won will determine the winner of each age group. So every match you play, every game counts. And whoever has the most games at the end of the round robin, uh, first first place and second place in games is going to get a trophy. Uh, that's what it looks like here. No selection process. Now, you're not going to have to worry about that for a while as you get a ranking and you uh, have a lot more experience and you enter into tournaments that are higher level. They're going to have a selection process some of the time, which means that you need to have a certain ranking or a certain amount of points to get in. Um, now, let's take a look here. This is this is a kind of a helpful little tab here, this Applicants. Click on that, and what that's going to do is it's going to show you who's actually registered for this tournament. Now, keep in mind that this tournament closes, the entries close tonight, 
So um, they close in a few hours. There's only 21 players registered. That's not that many. So, for example, like I'm looking, there's one boys, 12s there, two, three, four. There's four boys, 12s. So that's that's not too bad. That means you might get to play, you know, three. Oh, this kid's from Washington. Interesting. Um, must be down visiting. So you might get to play a few matches, but if you start looking like boys, if you're if you're signed up for boys 14s right here, you're the only one. Um, and I don't even see any boys 16s. So that's kind of what can happen in some of these tournaments. Um, you're going to want to check and make sure that there's actually going to be some competition for you. Um, it looks like boys 12s, there's, there's going to be a good little, little group there. Um, it looks like girls 10s, there's a fair amount of kids. Um, but make sure that there's, there's actually some competition. Now you could register for this tournament and go and look at it, you know, a few hours before the entries close and go, gosh, there's just not that many people signed up. I want to withdraw and you can do that. Um, the one thing that's not clear, which I would email the tournament director about this is it doesn't actually say what the match format is going to be. It talks about the format of play the round robin, but are, are they going to play two out of three sets? Are they going to play a pro set? Are they just going to play to six games? Are they going to just play a total of six games in each match? Um, that's something you want to know. Uh, it's good information. I don't know why it's not in here. Probably because they're just kind of flying by the seat of their pants and they haven't they're going to wait and see how many people are registered. But, um, yeah, this applicants tab is helpful. So, um, I don't know if this is my favorite tournament here, but it's, it's a start. So let's go back to that results page, uh, and see if we can find another one. So this next one here, which also starts Saturday, is a level six. So that's going to be a little bit more uh, skilled level of player. And it's at the Rusty Miller Tennis Academy. I have no idea where that is, but it's in Anaheim apparently. Um and so we can click on this and just check. So, oh, by the way, here it says draws available. It should say that down here. Well, actually, you can see here the draws are out. So so the entries for this one closed on Tuesday. It was kind of like what I was saying earlier. You know, typically the entries close and then the draws come out like a day or two later. So you have some time to plan. This one is interesting. This is the 15th through the 17th. I wonder, why is it good? So that's... Odd. I, I guess maybe the kids don't have school on 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 Monday. Is it? Uh, and you'll you'll see here they have a lot of divisions. So they've got boys and girls singles, doubles, yellow ball. Now this one they actually have an eighteen and under as well. And then they've got a they have mixed. So they got boys and girls playing doubles together. Um, and you'll notice this is S E. It says SE at the end of all of these except for this one, RR. SE is what I was talking about earlier, single elimination. So once you lose, you're out. So if you lose your first match, well, you know, it's it's tough luck, unfortunately. Um, round robin here for the girls, 10 and under, red ball, 8. So this is actually... It's 10 and under, but it's actually 8. You have to be 8 or under to play. This is the 36-foot court where you actually have the net um, going perpendicular to the, the main net, and they're playing double sideline to double sideline, basically the width of, of our full court. This is kind of cool, though. They actually have green dot. Uh, they have a green dot level here as well. So um, for a lot of our kids that play green dot ball, this is a good option to actually get out and play uh, a match with the balls you're comfortable with. So here you're going to look through here. you got the important info. Again, this is telling you where the actual sites are. So this Rusty Miller uh, Tennis Academy, he, they're going to be playing this tournament at three different sites. 
So these would be the actual abbreviations here. L, uh, ELDO is the El Dorado High School, CYN for Canyon High School, Esperanza. Now, when you look at the draws, it'll have this abbreviation, and that's how you're going to tell where you're playing. Um, yeah, you agree to the code of conduct, of course. You might want to look that over. Um, so here, this one, see, they actually talk about uh, oh, so they have a consolation. First and second round losers may play sign up at playing site. So it didn't say that. Normally what it would say here instead of SE is FMLC, first match loser console. I'm pretty sure it stands for first match loser consolation. So if you lose your first ma match of the tournament, then you go to go into the consolation, which is... You know, it's not realistic how a real tournament play works, but it's fun. You you know, you get a chance to to play another match and potentially maybe maybe two or three more matches depending on how many people uh, are in the tournament. It's nice. It's a good good way to get a little more of your money's worth. Doesn't say if they're going to if you have to pay more for that, but you can sign up there if you lose. So, the match format for singles, two sets and a match tie break. Uh, oh, so the consolation round is an eight-game pro set. So that's just one set to eight games. You play two eight uh, eight games. It's not clear if 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 you play to, if you need to win by two games. So nine seven. If you do a tie break at eight all, that kind of thing. It might be just two eight. And that's something you'd want to check on. But anyway, the main draw. There's these uh, singles matches are are. You get to play two sets, and then it, I'm assuming it doesn't say this, but uh, I'm assuming the match tiebreak is what you would do in the third set, and it's probably a tiebreaker to ten. Um, so if if you split sets, one kid wins the first set, the other kid wins the second set, then you're going to play a a ten point tiebreaker. That's why it's important to know that tiebreaker scoring. It's going to happen a lot. Regular scoring in the main draws that means with add. Okay, doubles are all eight game pro sets. Um, the rest of the stuff isn't really important, uh, but let's look at the draws. Oh, let's look at applicants first, actually. So we can see here they've got, wow, they got quite a few applicants. Holy moly, 143 players signed up for this tournament. So th this is nice. There's a lot more kids in this one. So let's go to the draws here. So choose an event. Let's just go to all draws to start. So boys, 18 singles. This is going to be very common. You're not going to see a lot of people in the 18s. Uh, the 16s, that's, this is impressive. They have a 64 draw. I don't think there's going to be 64 people in it. No, there's not. Um, a lot of these people have buys in the first round. Um, so, But still, they have over 32 people in that Um in that draw that's that's good so let's look at what our kids age ages are they're more like the 12s uh and, and some probably 14s too so boys let's start with this boys 12 singles uh yeah they've got quite a few people here so some of these some of the looks like some of these players that are seated are getting buys um but overall there's like 26 people looks like in this um in this draw right here so you could see now obviously you have to win every match but if you won every match well even if you won all the matches and lost the last one um you know if you lost, made it to the finals and lost you are you're gonna play one two three four five matches so that that's good um this is a good tournament here i like it uh you'll see that it, the the times are on here so some of these matches are kind of early 9 30 a.m there you go you got to be up by seven if you're following the rules. ELDO, that's telling you where it is it's at that El Dorado High School. There's probably a good chance you might even be able to warm up there. If you're the first one there, you might be able to hop on the court and warm up. Probably not going to be in use. Let's look at girls, 12s, singles. Okay, so uh, this is, yeah, so not as many in the girls. Mm, it's like 18 people, maybe. Um, yeah, it looks like about 18 people. And the girls are playing at Canyon or wherever that was. Oh, this one's at S. So you got this is the thing. This happens sometimes. You don't look close enough at the draws 
and and you, when they're at these multi-site places like this, you show up to the wrong place because you were looking here and it was you thought it was you thought you were playing at the canyon, but really you were supposed to be at Esperanza or whatever this other school is. So really check that very closely when you're when you're looking at these draws. Um, always email or call the tournament director if you're unsure of anything. Okay, so this is good now. <coughs> excuse me. I forgot to go over this. $52.10 for singles, $29 for doubles. Uh, that's going to be $29 for each player. I, I think it's a good idea if if you find a tournament that has doubles and singles that you play both. You're just going to get more playing time in. Um, it's kind of sad that you have to pay this much money and for the doubles you only get a pro set. But you know, you just, it's, it's good to have that, that playing experience. So they'll partner you up with somebody or you can pick your own partner. Um, you'll be able to pick that when you actually register. So let's go back here. I like this tournament though. This looks good. Uh, it's got a lot of players in it. So you got some good competition. Here's another level seven Costa Mesa tennis. Wait, what on earth? Hold on. Oh, we're back to by location again. So, cause that's that's a long ways out. Um, let's go by date. So, level seven, city of Irvine. Uh, this is just a uh, this is just full court regular ball, and it's just twelve and under, fourteen and under, sixteen and under. Um, level six. This is at the, oh Anaheim Tennis Center. Yeah, this is another good one, um, and they have. Yeah, full court, regular ball, 12 and under, 14 and under, 16 and under, 18 and under. They also have green dot for 10 and under. Um, and that and this is a round robin format. So, um, and I believe, yeah, this, so the entries close on the 18th. So you got till like Monday or something or Tuesday next week to sign up for that one. And then it's the 22nd. So it's that next weekend. Um yeah, let's see here. And then here, level three, that's going to be advanced. That's going to be higher level players. So level one, two, three, four, five, you're going to want to stay away from that. Stay away from level one through five for now. Um, let's go back really quick to that. Oh, okay, so actually you can just click on modify slash new search. So if I go and I click on only show entry level events, this is going to be a little helpful. Maybe just when you're first looking, click what on earth? Oh, that is weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're having an, they've got some kind of error going on. Well, that doesn't surprise me because this website is a little interesting. Let's try one more time. Okay, so we've got that checked and let's hit modify search. Oh, what on earth? Really? That can't be happening. Well, what you could do, because basically what this is doing, if you click on only show entry level events, it's basically, it's just going to show you the level seven. So you could go to, um, you could go to category and you could click on level seven. That's another way to do it. Let's see if that works. Oh my goodness. What on earth is going on? Uh but that normally should work. I don't know why it's not working. But this is what can happen to this website. Oh, is it because it, what on earth? It went back to grass. That's why it's doing that. Why would it do that? So I'm going to put this back on all tournaments. I'm going to put, I'm going to check this box again. And now I'm going to hit modify search. Okay, so now this is doing what I thought it would, stupid thing. Uh, I'm going to change order results back to by date because I just want to see what's coming up next. So now you're just going to have these level seven tournaments. Uh, wait, what? Oh, what on earth? I don't know why it's show. Okay. So these first three, I expect at uh, first four, I expected to see, but what is this NTRP men's? We're supposed to be looking at juniors. This makes no sense. Okay, what is going on here? Should we have junior selected? 
So I don't know, but that's how this website works. And you notice it just keeps going back to grass. That's so silly. Um, yeah, there's not that many grass court tournaments in this country uh, or anywhere for that matter. There's just not that many. Okay, so a little bit of a tangent there. Um, I'm just going to uncheck this box again. I'm going to go back and modify the search one more time. But that would bring you to, that. if you check that box, it's going to show you just, well, obviously it didn't. I'm lying right now. But it should, in theory, show you just the level 7 tournaments. So level 6, level 7, that's what you're going to want to start with. Level 7 is pretty much exclusively novice. Um, so I want to take one more quick look here at a tournament that's actually already happened. So I want to go to... The shortcut here, I'm just going to put this back to select a shortcut because I don't want anything to happen there. And I'm going to change this to February because I want to see tournaments. I want, oh, why does it keep going back to grass? Oh my gosh. I want to see what tournaments just, ha oh, we forgot to talk about sanctioned. That's okay. Go back to that in a second. So Costa Mesa Tennis Center, you guys all know this place because it's super close by. And this is going to be a great place when they do have... And they have a lot of tournaments. So they're not always going to be level 6 and 7 like this. So this this one actually had level 6 and 7. Uh, they had both of those um, both of those divisions there. And they had all the age groups, boys and girls, for it. And they had, they had orange ball and green dot. Um, single elimination. Uh, yeah, non-elimination format for the orange ball. So let's click on this. This tournament already happened. It, it happened the uh, first weekend in February. And so here, you know, you can see it was 55 bucks to play in that thing uh, for the level six. The level seven is 48. It looks like it's cheaper. Not sure why that is. Um, let's look at the format just to check really fast. Let's see if it says anything. Okay, so yeah. So level seven girls 10 and under okay that's a round robin that was the orange ball but but the level six and seven singles here boys and girls is two sets regular scoring with a 10 point super tiebreaker so that was what i was suspecting the other tournament was was using was a a 10 point tiebreaker it said match tiebreaker but i believe that's also a 10 point tiebreaker now that's good um doesn't say anything about consolation though Usually it would say FMLC. That's what I'm familiar with. I don't know why they don't say that. Maybe it's just because they don't want to make it official. But this one definitely doesn't have consolation. Once you lose, you're out. So let's look at the draws here. And let's go to, uh, let's look at boys 12s level 6 just to see what. So this is a nice 32 draw here. Um, and you can see this has been completed uh, there was about, looks like 17 or so people in it. Uh, it's a 32 draw, but everyone got buys in the first round, except for, it looks like these guys right here, um, Peyton, Briffa, and, um, Yan Ting Lee. Now, A. Joshi won the tournament. A. Joshi. Now, he won, and it looks like he wasn't really, challenge so 6060 6061 6260 6261 so he only gave up about six games the entire weekend so that's not bad now let's click on this guy's name so a joshi let's look him up and do a little sleuthing so this kid has played one two three Four. He's actually already played four tournaments this year. Uh, looks like he just started playing tournaments. Yeah, he hasn't been playing for very long. His first tournament on here is October. Now, this this would go way back, so this is his first tournament. And it looks like in his first tournament, he played this Top Gun Junior Satellite Tournament Level 6. And he won... The first round won the second round and then lost in the quarterfinals 6-2-7-5. And he lost 6-2-7-6. Uh, uh, and he lost 7-5 in the tiebreaker so of uh, the second set. 
uh, and then here there was some doubles thing that they only played one match and then they lost. Uh, here is another, this is level five, so this is even a little bit higher uh, than the first singles tournament he played in. And he lost the round of 16. Here's a doubles one. They won. Joshi won. Um, Costa Mesa Holiday Classic level five. Joshi won the first two rounds, but then he came up against Garcia and got crushed. Well, not in the first set, but in the second set. So you can see now here, Joshi also won this tournament. So he's won a level six tournament already. So he's not going to be in level six much longer. He should probably be sticking to like level five and uh, maybe a little level four. Here's the, uh, oh, okay. So this was a level six and he lost in the finals. Uh, close, kind of a close match there. Um, here's the Costa Mesa one that he won. That's the one that we clicked on. And then here, this is looks like his first level four tournament that he ever played. Uh, this level four RCI Babel at, at the Racket Club of Irvine. Now, this will give you an idea of just how deep the field is. So his first match in the round of 64, he crushed Gabriel Kluber Martinez 6-0, 6-0. And then in the second round, the round of 32, he crushed Junhan Wang 6-0-6-0. But then in the round of 16, Joshi himself ran into a buzzsaw in Nicholas Hung and lost 6-1-6-0. So that's just to kind of show you how deep the competition is as you get higher to these higher levels. You know, this guy won his first two matches, 6-0, 6-0. You know, he, he was probably eating a pizza while he was playing. Um, but then in, in his third match, he just got crushed. So, you know, and, and who knows? Nicholas Hung might win his next match after that. In the, in the uh, That would be the quarterfinals. But then he might get onto the semis and just get crushed. It's just it, it's a it's really deep the competition as you get to these these higher levels you'll you'll see as you play more so anytime you want to do a little sleuthing you know check on a player when these draws come out you can click on their name uh, back on the um, if you go back to just that tennis link homepage you can actually I think it's even just right here if you highlight uh, this um, this tournaments tab. You can go over here to find a ranking, and you could put in the membership number. Uh, you might not know that, but you just put in the player name and you just search. So uh, and then that's all you have to do. Um, so that I believe. Oh wait, hold on a second. We didn't get to actually registering. Th that's the thing is is there's so much stuff going on here that you know it really really uh, there's really really a lot to take in. So. Let's say we want to register for that level seven in Seal Beach, the one where the entries close. Little kind of silly non-elimination format tournament. So click on register online, and big surprise, it does not take you to where you can register. But you got to click on register now here. So do that. Click on register now. Type in your USDA account number. Um, you're going to want to <laughs> keep track of that account number, the number you're going to get after you register with the USDA. And you're going to get to the next screens where it's going to ask you what division you're registering for. So you're going to pick girls, 10s, girls, 12s, boys, 12s, whatever it is. And some of these tournaments, you can actually register for more than one division. So let's say your son is 11 and they just can't get enough tennis. You might be able to register them for the 14 and unders and the 12 and under singles. Um uh, you know, you don't always want to do that. Sometimes it's going to be too much tennis. You're going to want to check with the tournament director first and make sure that you can do that because sometimes the times don't work out. There's just too much overlap going on. But um, you can register for multiple divisions. Now, you have to pay for both of them. So if it's 55 bucks, you're going to pay 110 bucks. But um, it's a good way to get more tennis in and, uh, you know, just get more practice. Anyway, that's about it. I want you to let me know if you have any questions. If you're just like, you know what, Wyatt, this is too much. I can't stand 
this system it doesn't make any sense i don't want to look through it all it's just this is just too crazy then you know send me an email and i'll tell you what turn tournaments to register for and i can help you with it just email me wyatt at wrtennis.com and and ask me your questions and i will help you out as best i can i want this to be a fun experience for you and your kids uh this little entry into tournament play you're about to go down a uh, a big rabbit hole with this it's it's a lot of fun um especially when you win that first tournament and, and these kids will win uh you know we've got good kids in our program and, and um sometimes too it just takes that little spark of of like serious competition to really light the fire under the kids and all of a sudden they're just like I, I can't get enough of this. I want to play more. I love the competition. Um, so it, it's great. I think it's good. Like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.